Taunting has been a part of the sport of football for about as long as it's been around. But unfortunately, the NFL doesn't take too kindly to that kind of behavior, so we don't really see these colorful celebrations nearly as much anymore. But in years past, these moments stand out as some of the most interesting, exciting, and funny in all of NFL history. We have too many rules already. Stop talking about what new rules come in, and let's get back to some of those old rules so, uh, so we can see some of that old good time football. The NFL has garnered the nickname the No Fun League because of their strict rules on celebrations and taunting. In 2021, it was announced that the league would be putting a stronger emphasis on these rules. Still moving the pile. That's a little out of the uh, county tractor pull right there. Taunting. Offense. Number 42. Well, some NFLers are pretty dang lucky that the league was a little more relaxed back in the day because these 10 taunting moments from the past definitely would not fly today. Terrell Owens celebrates on the star. Out of every retired NFL player, Terrell Owens should legitimately be the happiest about the fact that he isn't still playing today. A big part of T.O.'s legendary status was his touchdown celebrations. If he was playing in this era, the league's new rules certainly would have deprived us fans of his many epic and timeless sellies. Perhaps his most memorable touchdown celebration that wouldn't fly today took place in week four of the 2000 season when Owens 49ers visited the Dallas Cowboys. After scoring a touchdown in the second quarter, Owens ran to midfield, posed, and celebrated right on the Dallas Star. When Emmett Smith scored a TD late in the game for the Cowboys, he went over to midfield and reclaimed the Dallas Star by placing the football on it. And <laughs> now, it was on. In garbage time, Owens scored his second touchdown in the game and he followed it up by heading right back to midfield. Only this time, he was rudely confronted by some unexpected company. George Teague received an ejection for that hit, while T.O. was penalized for taunting. And the 49ers, not the league office, suspended Owens one game for the excessive celebrations. Head coach Steve Mariucci said, quote, It disturbs me when the integrity of the game is compromised in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so Owens was suspended by his own team for the incident. But if he pulled the same move today, you can bet you're behind that the Niners wouldn't have to have stepped in. Roger Goodell and company probably would have punished T.O. for them. I don't know, I mean, I kind of actually kind of expected it to be more. I mean, with all the crazy fines that's going on in the league right now, I kind of expected it to be more than 10000 but... Hey, I mean, I, I, I feel like it was worth it. It was worth it. Randy Moss moons Lambo. Moss and the Minnesota Vikings visited the arch rival Green Bay Packers in the 2004 NFC wildcard round. Before we continue, here's some context. As we go into Lambo, so as we coming in, uh, before they put the new locker rooms and all that stuff, it's probably about 10 white asses sitting over there over the hill. <laughs> they got all their pants down. It's nothing but white moon, just all lined up. <laughs> so we're on the bus. We're talking about, oh my God, we're sitting there laughing. So when Moss scored a huge touchdown that put the Vikings up by two scores in the fourth quarter, it was payback time. My mindset was like, dude, I'm not going to put my pants down. I'm just going, you know, fake moon them. Yeah. Moss pretended to moon the fans at Lambeau Field, which led to thunderous boos and a very memorable call from Fox's Joe Buck. That is a disgusting act by Randy Moss. And it's unfortunate that we had that on our air live. That is disgusting by Randy Moss. The NFL handed Moss a $10,000 fine for what they deemed unsportsmanlike conduct. Man, when I get back to the to the to the to Winter Park, <laughs> I get out to my truck. They tell me, Randy, Randy. I said, what? They were, you know they're gonna find you, boy. I said, man, come on now. I was thinking it was all in fun, and, you know, with the game. <laughs> man, when well, they boy, they hit me with that fine. Tell me, boy, you done fake moon them boys, and I looked at that fine sheet. Oh boy, I was hot. I was hot. <laughs> I was hot. That may have seemed like a harsh enough punishment at the time, but just imagine if Moss tried doing that today. Deion Sanders dances his way into the end zone. Following five seasons with the Atlanta Falcons, Primetime signed with the powerhouse San Francisco 49ers in 1994. The superstar cornerback didn't have to wait long to get revenge on his old team. San Fran had a visit to the Georgia Dome in Week 7 on the schedule. The 49ers downright humiliated the home team, but Sanders got some additional revenge in the form of a pick six. This memorable 93-yarder was a signature Deion Sanders play. As you could predict, the guy had a field day rubbing it in 
to his former team as he made his way down the field. If that happened in 2021, Sanders would easily have been fined for his dance on the way to the end zone. And who knows, maybe he would have even been flagged for his post-touchdown celebration. Terrell Owens and LeGarrette Blount mock Ray Lewis's dance. Baltimore Ravens icon and Hall of Fame linebacker Ray Lewis had a signature pregame dance that he always performed during player introduction for home contests. Lewis's dance became so iconic that a couple of players couldn't help but to mock it when they played the Ravens. Terrell Owens, who else, did it during the Eagles' Week 8 2004 home win against Lewis and the Ravens. Nine years later, New England Patriots running back LeGarrette Blount did it while in the final stages of a Week 16 2013 blowout victory. It's worth noting that Lewis was actually retired at the time of Blunt's celebration. But anyway, on the one hand, it's disrespectful to mock Lewis like that. On the other, it's clearly a compliment to him. If people are stealing your celebration, you obviously did it right. Patriots dance on the Chargers logo. The New England Patriots' non-stop winning in the Tom Brady era officially made them the NFL's most hated franchise of the 21st century. Yes, even more hated than the Dallas Cowboys. It wasn't just their winning that rubbed folks the wrong way. Oftentimes, their arrogance was on display at a time when their opponents and haters just weren't up for it whatsoever. Take, for instance, the Patriots' 2007 AFC Divisional Round victory over the top-seeded San Diego Chargers. Nate Ketting missed a game-tying field goal that would have forced overtime, thus ending the Bolts' dream campaign and LaDainian Tomlinson's MVP season. Immediately following the victory, several Patriots took to the middle of the field and danced on the Chargers logo, mimicking the signature lights-out dance of San Diego linebacker Sean Merriman. If it made the Chargers feel any better, the Patriots did fall to the Indianapolis Colts in the AFC Championship game one week later. Von Miller mocks Cam Newton's Superman celebration. The 2015 league MVP had garnered the nickname Supercam and Superman. There was just no stopping this guy when he was on his game. But Superman met his match when the Carolina Panthers hosted Von Miller in the Denver Broncos in Week 10 of the 2012 season. Newton and Miller, of course, were the first two picks of the 2011 draft. Safe to say that neither side really regrets their choices, though Miller couldn't help but taunt Newton and the Panthers a bit when he brought down Superman on this sack. Needless to say, it was a forgettable day for Newton, who was sacked seven times in a 36-14 loss. And of course, Miller was only getting started versus Newton. Go look up what number 58 did to number one in Super Bowl 50. Jeremy Hill versus the Terrible Towel there are few NFL traditions as historic as the Pittsburgh Steelers fans waving their terrible towels. Heinz Field is always filled with those signature yellow towels being waved around. Steelers fans also love bringing them when they invade opposing team stadiums, and trust us, those Pittsburgh fans are all over the place. So it's easy to understand why opposing players may not like the terrible towel. Anytime you play the Steelers, regardless of location, you have to see them twirling in the stands. Former Cincinnati Bengals running back Jeremy Hill made it clear how much he disliked the terrible towel when he scored a touchdown in a Week 15 2016 home game against their AFC North rivals. Hill wasn't able to rip the towel up, but the message was sent. Steelers fans got the last laugh, however, as the visitors escaped with a close 24-20 victory. Fortunately for Hill, no fines or penalties were issued on this play. But again, it probably would be a much different story in today's NFL. Rob Gronkowski laughs at Sean Davis. Rob Gronkowski has had a lot of ridiculously clutch moments in his career, which is a big reason why he has four Super Bowl rings. But few Gronk moments were more epic than the game-winning drive in Week 15 of the 2017 season against the Pittsburgh Steelers, with the AFC's top seed on the line. Trailing by four points just before the two-minute warning, Tom Brady turned to his go-to guy, time and time again. First, he caught a pass for 26 yards and was brought down by Sean Davis. On the next play, a 17-yard catch for Gronk, this time with Davis in coverage. Deion Lewis scored an eight-yard touchdown run to put the Patriots ahead by one point. On the two-point conversion, who else? Brady to Gronk with Davis in coverage. And this time, Gronk did more than just a simple Gronk spike. The Steelers could have used the better field position for their final drive. 
as a pick in the end zone by Duran Harmon put the game away for the Pats. Also, we're not coaches or anything, but maybe next time we'd have Gronk double covered in those circumstances. But anyway, the throat slash. There are zero chances an NFL player could get away with this without facing a penalty, fine, ejection, or suspension. Keyshawn Johnson made this celebration notable during a 1999 Monday night football game between his New York Jets and the rival Patriots. After scoring a touchdown in the first quarter, Johnson performed the disrespectful throat slash gesture. This disturbed the league office so much that they finally outlawed it during the 1999 campaign. Players would be penalized 15 yards for doing it, and if they did it from the sideline, they'd be issued a fine. Doing it at the NFL level in 1999 was wrong. But don't even think about trying this maneuver nowadays. Nick Bosa gets revenge on Baker Mayfield. You folks need the backstory before we dive into this instance. Mayfield led the Oklahoma Sooners to a road win over the Ohio State Buckeyes on September 9th, 2019, his final season of college football. To celebrate, Mayfield took it to an excessive level by planting the team's flag inside the Buckeyes O logo at midfield. Unfortunately for Mayfield, this would come back to bite him two years later. Mayfield's Cleveland Browns visited the 49ers on Monday Night Football in Week 5 of the 2019 season. In the waning seconds of the first half, Nick Bosa pressured and hit Mayfield, who was forced to throw the ball away. Bosa, who's a former Buckeye, didn't forget what Mayfield did to his alma mater two years earlier. So how did he respond? By mocking Mayfield's infamous flag-planting celebration. To make it even sweeter for Bosa, Mayfield was flagged for intentional grounding. And the 49ers crushed the visitors by a final score of 31-3. Not sure if this would fly in today's NFL, but if you ask me, even if it doesn't, it'd be well worth the 15-yard penalty. I think any Ohio State fan would agree. Everybody knows what that was for. Uh, just wanted to get payback. How long yeah, yeah, coming. But what other NFL taunting moments wouldn't fly today? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>